Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This video is the second in a series of videos about maximum demand calculations. My previous video was on the subject of maximum demand for domestic installations and I will add a link to that video at the top of the screen. In this video I'm going to be talking about maximum demand for commercial installations. So in Appendix A of the on-site guide you'll notice there are different diversity factors for different types of installation. So in this video, I'm going to be using the factors in the second column, which is for shops, stores, offices, and business premises. And I'll provide an example of the method that I use. This video is intended as a guide, as every installation is different, and it's important for the designer to assess the installation and use their knowledge and experience to assess the demand and apply any allowable diversity factors. So there are two methods that we could use for calculating the maximum demand and diversity in a commercial installation. The first method is to apply the allowable diversity factors for individual circuits. It's also possible to use the factor for standard circuits in accordance with Appendix H. However, for commercial premises, this is increased to 100% of the largest load plus 50% of the remaining loads. So it's slightly higher than on the example I gave for domestic installations. In this video, I'm going to be providing the example for maximum demand where I'm going to be using the individual diversity factors for each circuit. And I'll show how this can work for both single phase and three phase distribution boards. So for this example, I'm going to record my screen and show you how I calculate maximum demand using Microsoft Excel. So the first thing that I do is I list all of the circuits on the left hand side as they are on the distribution board. And then for any circuits where we know what the load is in watts, I will use that to calculate the design current in amps. For circuits that I don't know what the wattage is going to be, so for example the socket outlet circuits, I'll always use the value for the circuit breaker for those. Now for the lighting, it is typically possible to uh, add up the, the load in watts and calculate the design current. But for this example, I've just gone with the, uh, the value of the circuit breaker there. So the next thing we need to do is to highlight the diversity factor that we're going to use. So what we're going to do in this example, so from table A2, in the on-site guide, we're going to go with the second row, um, which for the type of premises is small shops, stores, offices and business premises. And in this example, the individual diversity factors obviously are quite, are quite higher. For showers, there's no diversity applicable, so I'm, I'm just going to put 100% in there. For sockets, it's going to be 100% of the largest load and then 70% of the remaining loads. So what I can do is I can just drag that down, just copy that down there. Now for the lighting, that's going to be 90% of the total load. And again, what I can do is I can just drag that down. So then what I want to do is I want to calculate the demand after diversity. So all I'll do is I'll, what I'll do is I'll, I'll multiply the current by the diversity factor. So for the largest load being 100%, all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on there and carry that forward. For the remaining loads, I'm going to do the same thing. Just do that there. Now for the loads, where we reduce, we've got the reduced to 70% and 90%, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go equals, highlight the cell, and then I'm going to press asterisk for multiply, and then 0.7. So that's going to give us 70% of that load. And again, if I hover in the corner here, I can just click and drag, and that carries that down. So the same thing here, equals, And then multiply 0.9 for 90 percent and then hit enter so that reduces that down to 90 percent so there we have an example of the maximum demand calculation for a single phase distribution board using the diversity factors for offices shops and commercial installations but what do we do if we have a three-phase board? So in the example of a three-phase board, what I would typically do is just divide this by the phases. So if I 
carry this over to columns. And then here, where I've got amps at the moment, if I change that to say L1, L2, and then L3, what I can then do is I can carry these over to divide them between the three phases. So there we have L1, there we have L2, and there we have L3. Uh, we probably want to even that up a little bit so that the so that the uh, loads are all even across the three phases there. And then what we can do is we can do the same over here, where we have the demand after diversity. I can put L1, L2, L3. and move those across like so. So what we can do now is we can add up the maximum demand for each phase. So if I just click on the cell where I want the answer to go, I'll type equals and then in capital letters I'll type sum and then brackets, and then I'll just click and drag all the cells that I want to capture. And then to repeat that, a quick way to do that is if I hover in the corner until I see the little plus sign, I can click and drag, and that just copies that over. So you can see that it's applied the formula to the relevant cells. So there we have for L1, L2 and L3, the maximum demand after diversity. In practice, we would probably want to even this up a bit so that the phases are, are evenly balanced. Um, but that is an example of how I calculate maximum demand for a three phase installation using Excel. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If so, please subscribe to my channel where I hope to add more videos on electrical engineering subjects.